Okay, let's get back to um, our discussions of the terrain correction here. And remember we make an observation and um, we want to estimate the theoretical gravity, the acceleration to gravity at the station location that's associated with everything that we can think of that really doesn't have anything to do with the geology that we're interested in. That, that could be the, uh, uh, the free air effect, the distance above the, uh, above the datum. Uh, that could be the effect of the <clears throat> hard rock beneath the observation point and the datum elevation, function of uh, also the topography um, uh, on the surface. And remember that, that the way we're approaching this is that we overlay a, we, we, we place a ring down centered at the station location and we look at the average elevation of the topography in the sectors that we divide that ring up into. <clears throat> and then we um, uh, make a correction based on the calculated influence of this sector on the observation made at this particular station location. <clears throat> so um, we got started on this the last time. We were looking at the F ring. Uh, this F ring goes from 1,280 feet to 2,936 uh, 2, feet. It's divided up into eight sectors. And uh, <clears throat> we made an estimate for the average elevation in sector, um, <clears throat> sector 1. And that estimate was 26. 40 feet. The station elevation was 2840. That gave us an elevation difference of 200 feet. And it's really these elevation differences that, that, that influence uh, are of interest to us because they represent the um, uh, topography above or below this, uh, the elevation of the station. And that's, that's what we need to correct for because remember at this particular point, we assumed that uh, the Earth was flat and that the, uh, we could compensate for all the rock beneath the observation point by an infinite plate. And uh, so we need to dig these holes in there, but these holes are only going to go down 200 feet or up 200 feet, depending on you know the rel elevation relative to this point. And in both cases, the influence is going to be negative. It's going to decrease the acceleration due to gravity <clears throat> estimated at this uh, point. So at 200 feet we have an estimate of three hundredths of a milligal uh, using the hammer table and uh, so we've just, you know, these are this is kind of a general range here extending from 189 to 224 feet and these numbers are in hundredths of a milligal so that's kind of the process that we would go through, and we did that for this first sector. So we have a contribution of 0.03 milligals. We need to do it for each sector in the ring in order to get the total effect associated with the topography between these uh, two distances, 1280 and 2936. Um, so so again, this is just kind of a summary we've already talked about. Um, T in the table is in hundreds of a milligal. We assume a replacement density and these values that are shown here in the hammer table of 2 grams per cubic centimeter. We got a contribution of 0.03 milligals uh, for the elevation of 200 feet here. And um, <clears throat> we could also go in here and just calculate it uh, directly, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but since there are eight sectors, if we were going to make that calculation, we would use the formula for the ring, but we'd have to divide it by eight because there are eight sectors in that ring. So each sector is only going to contribute one eighth of the total uh, change in elevation if that if each of those sectors had the same. Uh, relative ele elevation difference. So this factor of one eighth, or it could be one fourth or one sixth or one twelfth, depending on which ring you're in, 
it really gives you the contribution from a single sector in the ring. So we went through the you know this process for uh, sector one we got 0.03 milligals. If we were to calculate it using this equation up here we get 0 0.0279 milligals. Now we also noted that if the replacement density was different than two grams per cubic centimeter <clears throat> and in most places we were probably going to be higher than that uh, then we would scale this result by 2.67 over 2 or 1.34 <clears throat> so here's a here's another uh, here's another sector this is sector 4 uh, just to kind of review the process we already know what the station elevation is it's 2840 feet uh, the average elevation that's that's kind of a guess you know uh, an estimate on your part you could think about flooding this compartment with water at the uh, average elevation uh, I'm gonna say well it's gonna sit you know it would sit at an average elevation right here of about these contour intervals are 40 feet so we're about one contour below 2600 feet we're kinda of going downhill here this is 2200 feet um, <clears throat> so we'd have about 2560 as our average elevation in this sector and that would give us a delta E of about 280 so we'd come back over to the hammer table and we'd see that that influence would be 0.06 milligals for the uh, topography in this in this sector so we're going to take a look at an Excel file here and um, <clears throat> just kind of go over um, the computations and you know kind of point out some some issues uh, first of all you have to be units consistent so we're going to have to take our station elevation and convert that to uh, meters multiply the inner and outer radius times uh, 3.2808 in order to get uh, a units consistent computation using this equation uh, this equation you'll notice comes in two forms we, we're obviously we, we need to take one-eighth in each case because we're only computing the uh, contribution of a single sector but this constant here remember we talked about this before it's set up so that you can incorporate uh, densities in grams per cubic centimeter and your inner and outer radius and your average elevation difference in meters <clears throat> So there would be two ways to do this. You could just calculate it out the long way, or you could use this uh, shortcut method with the factor 0 0.04192. And a lot of a lot a lot of us do this. You just have to be sure that you you mix the units in this case. Density would be in grams per cubic centimeter, and all these uh, thickness and distance uh, measures would be in meters. So. <clears throat> We've got an, an elevation difference here of uh, 200. Uh, taking these two formulas, we've got uh, uh, calculations here using the constant 0 0.04192 and that density of 2 grams per cubic centimeter. And then here we have, we've incorporated all the terms, this uh, reference to cell E16. Uh, includes the uh, gravitational constant in K, uh, <clears throat> MKS units. Uh, so we have these two different approaches and the difference in them is um, uh, significant out to the sixth decimal place. So uh, now we also mentioned that the density in the hammer table is assumed to be two grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, if we had um, you know something closer to a, a, you know a quartz uh, type average density 2.67 we would be uh, <clears throat> multiplying this uh, uh, <clears throat> term that we term that we that we get here um, by the ratio of 2.67 to 2 and uh, that would give us a 0 0.037 instead of a 0 0.027 so down here we've got uh, all the different sectors that we've that we've talked about. 
uh, we've got the elevations, we've converted them to meters, we've got the elevation difference, we convert that to, um, to meters, we read off the values from the, from the table, we, we had a point of 0, 03 here. Um, let's, well, we'll just mention that using 2 grams per cubic centimeter, we get this point uh, 0279 rounding off with the density of 2.67 grams per cubic centimeter, we get 0 0.0372. Uh, so um, you do have to make sure that you incorporate the proper density when you're making these corrections. Now, this 520, if you remember the, the hammer tables, goes beyond the uh, actual elevation difference that shows up in the hammer tables. So, um, we we need to um, make an estimate. You know, if if that happens, you know, if the topography is so extreme in your area that it goes beyond the elevation differences noted in the table, you might do something like this. And I've just plotted up the um, high <coughs> delta E values from the hammer tables and the low delta E values from the hammer tables for the F ring, and have extrapolated this general trend up to um, 520 and that turns out to be about uh, 0.18. So, um, you know, just kind of coming back to the table, we'd add in um, 0.18. We had to estimate what that might be. Uh, maybe you might come up with some different number, but that's the way I did it. And in both of these cases, we have elevation differences in sectors 2 and 3 that, that fall outside the range reported in the hammer tables, uh, so on and so forth. These have the same elevation as the uh, station, so we have zero elevation difference, zero influence. <clears throat> now, you know, this is just one example, but the estimates based on, you know, what you would get taking the contributions from each sector uh, over this range of elevations. Actually, you know, when we total them up uh, for that uh, particular sector, it turns out to be, uh, or for that particular ring, the F ring, it turns out to be 0.6 milligal. So you can see how the the uh, terrain effect can be significant pretty quickly. Um, and it's very close to what we would get calculating it explicitly using this, this formula here. And then this would be the value corrected for the density, 2.67. So that's, that's kind of a, an overview of um, uh, the calculation of the uh, terrain effect. And um, uh, you can see that there's, there's, there's a, a good, good bit of work uh, involved in doing that. We also had to make this uh, extrapolation if the values run outside the range that are reported in the hammer tables. So uh, so that's, uh, that's the uh, terrain effect, the estimation of the terrain effect. And the next time we're going to talk about differences between corrections and effects. So, you know, as you know, um, we go out, we make an observation, we try to estimate what the um, acceleration due to gravity would be at that particular location. And then we subtract that estimate, the theoretical gravity, we call it, or the predicted gravity from the observation. And that gives us the anomaly. Well, notice that when we make this subtraction here, we're going to reverse all the signs and all the effects. So the free air effect, instead of being negative, is going to be positive. The Bouguer plate term will be uh, <clears throat> negative instead of uh, positive, and uh, so on. So we'll talk more about that uh, next time, and uh, uh, thanks for joining us. See you on the next video.